Hi, this is Alex Paul from AspenCore, and I'm here with Rich Hofla. He's with uh, Microchip, and well, you're also with the old group from Atmel, I'm guessing, because uh, no, no. I'm, a, I'm a Microchip guy. From you're a Microchip. Twelve years. Twelve years with Microchip. Very cool. And 20 years with Motorola before that. There you go. Now, so the reason I had brought them up is that they're... I myself, aren't I? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'm not going to tell you how far I go back. Um, but one of the things we were talking about, the reason I would mentioned it is that there's some of that old technology, I, mean, I should say old, some of that new technology from the old company in this device. Yes. In fact, the, uh, the peripheral touch controller, the PTC, came out of the Atmel side with the IP, and it's a very, very strong and powerful PTC feature that we're incorporating into all our devices moving forward with the new technology. Very cool. But let's back up a little bit, Rich, and talk about the device itself. Uh, it's a new 32-bit microcontroller that's Basically, the way I saw it from your presentation, it's designed for the, the future of the Internet of Things. When you look at the Internet of Things, security is a big weakness because there are no standards out there available. People just connect into it. Lots of vulnerability. This device provides both hardware and software security. So not only does the hardware allow you to partition through the ARM Trust Core capability to, to kind of secure your memory in your, in your products, you can store your keys on it. The software allows you to program in a predictable fashion so you do not have vulnerabilities that you can typically introduce if you're not careful on it. So somebody can, from a monolithic perspective, plug this device in and have a secure communication network with other devices. Very nice. Well, some of the examples you had given us, a lot of people are actually doing things like breaking into systems through thermostats and breaking into systems through, you know, remote devices that you don't think about, but they're talking to the mainframe. Sure, sure. This device uses private and public keys to be able to authenticate to ensure you are talking to the right person. It has a cryptographic accelerator on board the device that allows you to take your data encrypt it so people cannot interpret what's going on with the device. Now, um, obviously there are a lot of different applications for this. You could use it to secure a terminal, but you could also use it to uh, authenticate products or devices within a family. Absolutely. If you have, let's say, accessories you wish to be only your accessories to sell with your main equipment, this device can use that feature to authenticate that it is the proper device to plug into it. Very nice. Um, okay, so now walk us through a little bit. Give us an example of uh, you have the demo here. Give us an example of something that uh, you'd, be, you'd encounter as a developing engineer on a project or a threat that you would have to worry about and how this can mitigate it. Well, this device has what's called Trust Zone. It's a private uh, secured memory on the device, both flash and RAM, data flash, program flash, data RAM. You can put your IP and keep it secure on that device. The other side of the device could be your traditional application. If the device senses any kind of tampering, or if anybody's trying to get their malicious code in injected into it, it can reboot, either totally erase the memory, it could scramble the data, or it could just shut down, all depending on how you want to program the device in advance. So it's about, it's about how you want to develop your secure features. Often, everybody has a different security threat. Sometimes they're worried about people tampering with the device on the board. Other people are just worried about the quality of the data transmission that's not intercepted. This device actually has a, a way of uh, uh, scrambling the data such that if people are trying to use EMI in different side uh, attack uh, methodologies to interpret what's going on in the part, it's camouflaged. It, it has that ability to go do that. So it, actually, you almost don't have to tempest protect it since it's camouflaging its EMI leakage. You couldn't get any information out of it anyway. It makes it very difficult to get information out of the device. Very impressive. It also has metal shielding to prevent microprobing on the data uh, memory that's protected as well. Excellent. Now, um, one of the things people will say is that uh, security is an overhead cost, but you know, I'm ex-Army security agency. I've, I believe that security is a cost value add because if the system is insecure, what value does it have? Well, it used to be people said quality was an added cost, and then they found out that designing quality at the beginning really isn't an added cost. I believe it's the same for security. This device incorporates a lot of the hardware features you traditionally would have to think about implementing at a board level in the device itself. We offer, through our third-party partners, a software framework that provides guidelines to make it very simple to configure what you want to try to protect on your, your peripherals on the port and program through those peripherals, so it simplifies the software programming of it. Nice. Now, the other side of that coin, obviously, Rich, is, you know, as we were saying, security to some isn't a value add, so there have to be other reasons to purchase this device. I understand it has two very significant features. One is it's one of the lowest power devices in the industry. 
it's, it's the lowest power device in the industry. If you look at the embassy benchmarks, you'll find it, it's all certified on there, and we believe it's 2x the nearest competitor. The SAM L21, which is a previous microchip device, used to be the leader, and it's about one and a half times that in terms of its capability. Offers a lot of features uh, in terms of standby, different sleep modes, and different things in terms of data retention, so it's a very, very low power device. You can run a coin cell battery for five and a half years on it. Now, which brings us back to what we talked about at the very beginning, the functionality for Matmel that's injected into this, the touch controller. A lot of the functionality we've added to, uh, this particular device has something called Driven Shield Plus. Driven Shield Plus gives you a much higher noise immunity. It allows you to have more buttons, more closely placed together. It also allows you to work in a water environment. You can spray water on it, and it still does not short out uh, between it's the different now, buttons. Right? It should be live. Yeah, yep, there we go. There we go. See, if you can look there, you can see. Wait, there we go. See? So you can spray a little water on it to kind of give you an idea if I don't short out the back of it. Yeah, it's working. So, so ultimately, it's intended to be a much more noise immune environment. Closer buttons, you can get more uh, creative in terms of your user interface with the public, in terms of your end design. And you can do a lot more, just do a lot more with it. Very cool. Are there any things about this that I forgot to ask about you wanted to leave with our audience before we uh, close this out? I think that uh, security is going to be commonplace in the future. It's going to be a standard offering. We believe this is the first of its kind in this class device. Uh, we, we envision a lot more happening in the future. Uh, we, we see that the simpler you can make it for a designer to implement security, it, it, the easier it's going to be. And I think it's going to be a lot safer for everybody plugging into the web. I think these added features of the low power as well as the advanced peripheral touch capability just give you a nice package that gives you maximum flexibility in the different types of applications it can fit into and solve problems with. Very cool. Thank you so much. I appreciate you taking the time with me. Appreciate the time. Thank you very much.